subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button tag tv uk talk show london dialogue and discourse every tuesday night 7 pm uk time you are watching uk talk show today we are talking about Tibet, a great land, a great culture, a great civilization. I'm joined with a very dynamic personality, who is a renowned Tibetan politician and diplomat. I welcome Mr. Lop Sang Nayendak from New York. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, sir. It is a pleasure to have you, sir. Uh, you have served for Tibetans for a very long time, and your contributions are highly appreciated around the globe. Our viewers would like to know what is the future of Tibet. Uh, Tibetans are always uh, trying to be very optimistic in terms of how we build our future. even though we can understand that the under the totalitarian communist regime uh, tibetans in such tibet are uh, facing a tough time today uh, but at the same time we are hoping that the international uh, geopolitical changes would be in favor of the tibetan people but most importantly as has mentioned that during the past 60 years of our uh, uh, you know um, remaining under a subjugation of china Tibetans' determination and will has never uh, vanished from this uh, world. So we continue to pursue uh, for a uh, for a meaningful dialogue with the Chinese leadership, and we expect that one day and pretty soon China will understand that Tibet issue needs to be resolved, both for the benefits of the Tibetan people as well as for the benefit of the Chinese people and nation. do you see any hope from communist party of china that they would understand your very great stance on tibet very peaceful stance i must say you are right uh, we have been uh, since 19 early 1980s we have been trying to engage the chinese leaders with uh, with, with an understanding that tibetans would settle to a genuine autonomy status uh, but then you know we have seen that in the past uh, 30 years china has failed to uh, to positively respond to the proposal uh, that his holiness the dalai lama and tibetan leadership have presented to them uh, but nevertheless you know we see that there is no other alternate for the chinese leaders they know that uh, 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 you know continued operation of tibet is not only helpful for the image of the chinese government but also in real political terms uh, you know tibet remains uh, pretty unstable uh, you know for the last number of years so for them to achieve a political stability not just in tibetan areas but overall in china and as well as in the asian region china has to come up with some kind of solution to the t- tibet problem we do understand that communist regimes are difficult to be dealt with you know uh, they have been playing uh, politics that could undermine the very survival of the liberal ideologies and values around the world so, therefore they are also facing a huge challenge from the international community in the light of uh, demographic changes done by communist party of china so in that scenario uh, what do you think the future of tibet the demographic demographic changes that you are talking about uh, they have been having a very expansionist kind of a foreign policy as you can imagine that uh, uh, under xi jinping's leadership uh, he took certain initiatives that has threatened the very stability of 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 you know uh, you know uh, people around the world including uh, their uh, exertion into the south china sea uh, their um, 
so-called Bell and Road uh, Initiative, and 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 incursions into different uh, uh, territories of other sovereign countries. So these are all uh, challenging uh, the stability of the entire world. So we understand that China has been a nuisance, uh, particularly in the past, uh, you know, a few months, and that has to change. And China's uh, for their own benefits, as well as for the for the benefit of the humanity and the entire world, China needs to change. If China doesn't change, the world will make them change. And I'm pretty optimistic about it. So you said if China would not change, the world would change China. Based in New York, do you see any hope from the government of United States? that they would pressurize China in terms of their dictatorial mindset towards Tibet? There has been uh, positive changes in the policies and positions, not just of the United States, but in different parts of the world, particularly in Western countries. United States, uh, ever since the Trump administration uh, came into power, uh, you know, they have very strongly stood against the Chinese regime's unfair tra trade practices in particular. Uh, but having said that, now the issue and the relationship with, between China and the United States have gone beyond the trade issue. It is now more about the, uh, uh, the, uh, the even, you know, it, it is said that it's more about the survival of the, of the uh, you know, liberal ideas and values. And therefore, in order to protect uh, the liberty uh, of people around the world, the United States is taking the lead to fight against the communist influence, uh, you know, throughout the world. So I believe that with this new, uh, even some people term this as a, a new Cold War, uh, it is too early to decide whether it's going to be a next Cold War or not. But nevertheless, uh, China is uh, feeling uh, the, uh, the toughness of the international community. And I, I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, the, the perception of the world against China has already changed and it will continue to change until China, uh, you know, makes positive changes. So do you think that the toughness of the world towards Chinese regime, uh, particularly in the wake of uh, pandemic situation, uh, there would be some betterment in Tibet and China's mindset could change towards Tibet? Unfortunately, you know, China has uh, not deterred from, uh, from international pressure in terms of situation, not just in Tibet, uh, but in other uh, occupied, uh, you know, territories, including uh, Xinjiang and uh, Inner Mongolia. We have had, uh, uh, you know, uh, situations where Chinese communist regimes are now not just only targeting the political and civil rights of, of, of the Tibetan people, they're even targeting the very language of the Tibetan people, which means that when, when a language is targeted, uh, the very essence of a nation and people is also being threatened. The very cultural identity of the Tibetan people is also being threatened. So under such circumstances, China is playing a long time, uh, you know, uh, uh, objective to eradicate the very survival of the rich Tibetan culture and heritage. So this is a huge risk uh, for the Tibetan people. So, you know, similarly, other uh, peoples under Chinese uh, regime, including Xinjiang, uh, you know, Uyghurs and, and uh, Inner Mongolian uh, people are facing. So, so we have to all uh, continue to fight against these uh, repressive policies which threatens the very you know, survival of, uh, of our culture and heritage. So I believe that uh, it is uh, the Tibetan people themselves. Uh, you know, we have had 156 Tibetans who have uh, self-immolated, uh, you know, to, to, to protest against the, uh, the repressive policies of the Chinese government. You know, Tibetans uh, from entire Tibetan uh, three provinces have expressed in some way or the other, you know, uh, how they are uh, dissatisfied uh, with Chinese policies. So, so in addition to uh, the continued uh, determination and uh, will of the Tibetan people, we are expecting uh, 
you know, other countries, including uh, United States, including India and other uh, like-minded countries who would support the Tibetan issue and support the, uh, you know, issues of other subjugated minorities inside Tibet. Trump administration is being tough with China. Uh, U.S. elections uh, are around the corner, and uh, if Democrats get elected, what do you see the potential of United States uh, support towards uh, Tibetan cause? Uh, what I personally view is that the position of each administration in the White House have been almost the same with regard to the Tibet issue. Uh, even though uh, respective administration has differed in their own position to how to deal with China and communist uh, regime in China, uh, but nevertheless, with regard to Tibet, there has been uh, a Tibet Policy Act of 2002, and this act is now being renewed uh, 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 by uh, by the U.S. government. In fact, uh, the U.S. Uh, lower house or House of Representatives have already passed it. You now it's in the Senate. If once it is passed, then the there'll be a revised uh, new law uh, that would be followed by any administration. You know that that comes to the White House uh, after the election. So I'm not that worried about it. But having said that, the question here is: we have had series of uh, U.S. administrations. But their position on Tibet has, sorry, on, on, on China, uh, unlike the Trump administration, has been very uh, friendly. Uh, you know, it's more of an appeasement policy than uh, directly a challenging an adversary in terms of, uh, you know, not just on economy, but in terms of how much bad influences, uh, you know, a, a communist can bring in the liberal society. Tibetans are having their government in exile in India. And, sir, you happen to uh, be a part of uh, that government uh, from a very long time. I would like to know, and my viewers would like to know as well, how would you relate the future of Tibet in terms with India? We have had... Um a historical relationship with uh, India, and and we know that uh, the very culture, the very religion that we uh, cherishly preserve, it all came from India. So therefore, uh, the relationship between uh, the Indian and the Tibetans have been age old, and it's very precious uh, for the Tibetan people. Having said that, the government of India and people is the uh, strongest supporter of the Tibetan people, uh, strongest supporter in also in terms of preserving the Tibetan culture and heritage, strongest support in also in terms of uh, in the providing uh, political uh, support. So therefore, you know, despite the fact that Tibetans have been scattered uh, for the last 60 years during the, uh, you know, uh, uh, after the occupation of Tibet by China, but we have been able to uh, very strongly uh, preserve, not only preserve our you know, identity, but at the same time uh, thrive in this ever-increasing and uh, in interdependent world. It's all, it's mainly because of the support that the government of India has uh, you know, extended to His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan people. Having said that, now about the future, I believe that the, uh, the relationship between India and China, uh, you know, Tibet will continue to be uh, you know uh, be friendly and the uh, government of india will continue to not just support uh, but also help in protection and promotion of the tibetan uh, uh, you know culture and identity so you said that uh, tibetan uh, culture identity and even religious spiritual uh, beliefs are very close uh, with india is there any possibility in future when the world scenario changes, uh, the Tibetans would like to adhere themselves as a part of India? I really cannot say that because Tibet, as you know, 
has been existing uh, since uh, the first king of Tibet was enthroned, which is 127 uh, BC. And uh, it's, it's a matter of changes in the administration of Tibet. Uh, you know, we had a period in history, especially in the 13th century, where uh, uh, the Mongols ruled Tibet, uh, you know, for over a period of time. And then, you know, today, it's the communist China who's ruling, ruling Tibet. So t tomorrow it could be Tibetans themselves. Because if you look at the uh, 2000 history, uh, Tibetans have been mainly ruling the Tibetan areas. So we are pretty hopeful that Tibetans will, uh, you know, uh, to achieve our goal and our aspiration one day, they will continue to, uh, you know, administer uh, our own uh, territory and, and protect our own you know, interests. But having said that, uh, you know, government of India has been accommodating to over 100,000 Tibetans in India for the last 60 years. And uh, they have looked after the welfare of the Tibetan people, the Tibetan refugees. They have uh, looked after, uh, you know, and, and established uh, Tibetan settlements, uh, educational institutions. And, and I believe that the government of India will continue to extend its support uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, friendly relationship with the Tibetan people. So it's, uh, it's 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 impossible to say uh, that uh, will Tibetans uh, you know uh, unite with India as 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 India ruling you know Tibetans because six million Tibetans are still in Tibet so territorially it it is currently uh, governed or ruled by the communist regime in China but it's a matter of time as I said you know Tibetan areas you know, since we are uh, you know seeking for a genuine uh, autonomous uh, region for the Tibetan people. We believe that Tibetans, uh, you know, areas would be administered by Tibetans themselves in the foreseeable future. Mr. Nanda, you said that uh, Tibetans are looking forward to administer their own beautiful land and civilization. But again, coming back to demographic uh, situation, uh, due to Communist Party of China. What do you see the social fabric at the moment you and I am talking about the situation in Tibet? What do you see the social fabric in today's Tibet? Very true. The demographic aggression of uh, you know, Tibet is one of the major concerns of the Tibetan people. Now, we have uh, you know, current examples of uh, you know, of other peoples, as I mentioned, in China. Uh, let's talk about Manchurians. You know, uh, in China, uh, there are 10.5 million uh, uh, Manchurians in China, but hardly anyone speaks their own language. Hardly anyone really appreciates or understands their own, own culture and heritage. So similarly, uh, uh, you know, there are um, some in, in Inner Mongolia, for example, 80% uh, of the uh, you know people in Inner Mongolia are Chinese, uh, and and similarly in Tibet today, uh, 7.5 million Chinese have already overwhelmed uh, the uh, 6 million Tibetan people. So this this has uh, major negative impacts on 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 Tibetan people. Uh, you know we have had the research being undertaken in terms to understand. Uh, the the uh, the prevalence or the the usefulness of uh, Tibetan language, for, for instance, and there are people who are saying that you know if you if you enter into a uh, a post office, uh, you know everything has to be conducted in Chinese language. If you visit a, a hospital, similar situation. If you go to the market and buy uh, you know, stuff, everything the labels are in Chinese. So one uh, tourist in Tibet said that. Almost, you know, Tibetan language is uh, non-existence in terms of the social, uh, you know, day-to-day -day, uh, activities. And 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 the uh, scholars, Tibetan scholars in Tibet, used to say that the Tibetan language is now confined to education institutions. And now this is further being threatened by the uh, by the Chinese, uh, you know, regime, uh, cautiously and intentionally, because they wanted to encourage uh, Chinese language as a medium of uh, uh, 
you know, teaching in, in, in almost all of the uh, Tibetan schools in, in Tibet today. So these are these are pretty, uh, 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 you know, uh, difficult, challenging, you know, uh, for the Tibetan people. But having said that, I once again wanted to remind uh, that uh, the determination of Tibetan people is very strong. Uh, we see that uh, uh, Tibetans are expressing themselves in many different ways, including singing songs, you know, playing different kind of music, showing that you know we are one, we are different, we have a distinct uh, you know identity, and therefore uh, you know uh, it's extremely difficult for the Chinese the communist regime to to uh, uh, to uh, you know, threaten the very uh, cultural existence of the Tibetan people. And I remind also that uh, Tibetan language does not, you know, uh, only confine to the uh, Tibetan people. Tibetan language is also uh, dependent on the uh, Buddha Dharma. Uh, you know, the, the entire text of Buddha Dharma is only preserved in, in Tibetan language. So once it is uh, destroyed, it's a huge loss. Uh, to the entire humanity. So I believe that the uh, those uh, you know Chinese leaders with common sense will appreciate that language is something uh, you know extremely uh, you know important uh, for the preservation of the Buddhist uh, uh, Buddha Dharma and Buddhist culture around the world. I would like you to say some message, some statement, what you think we are missing in our discussion today. So whatever you think is important to add in our conversation, please say so. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. I personally believe that Tibetans, you know, issue needs to be supported by the entire international community. It's been over six, in almost 60 years now and uh, there is uncertainty in terms of when will we achieve our own freedom. And uh, particularly uh, when His Holiness the Dalai Lama's age has advanced and, uh, and, and there is uh, uh, looming fear and uncertainty within the Tibetan people and, and, and the supporters of the Tibetan people that what would happen uh, when you know, His Holiness uh, you know, is no more with us. And therefore, it is also important because when we consider His Holiness the Dalai Lama, it's not just a, a spiritual leader of the Tibetan people. Or, you know, uh, he is the leader of the Tibetan Buddhist world. And this Tibetan Buddhist world has been uh, there since, since almost the 13th century. Uh, you know, the Tibetan Buddhist is not just confined to the 6 million Tibetan people. Uh, ever since 13th century, it has been, uh, uh, you know, spread in many other neighboring countries. Now today, internationally, so the Tibetan Buddhist followers regard His Holiness the Dalai Lama as the most important, uh, most revered, uh, you know, uh, uh, spiritual uh, leader. And having said that, His Holiness the Dalai Lama has also become uh, a world moral leader who has been, uh, you know striving in terms of promoting human values, striving in terms of promotion of, uh, you know, uh, uh, religious harmony and, and a peaceful world. So his stature today in the world is so important and therefore protection and promotion and supporting of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Dalai Lama institution is very crucial, not just for the Tibetan people and, and the followers of Tibetan Buddhism, but to the entire humanity. So support from the international community, uh, you know, it's extremely important that to ensure that the Dalai Lama and Dalai Lama institutions continue to remain strong and, and, and relevant uh, in the international community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind views. And uh, I'm sure um, our viewers would know more about Tibet and Tibetan struggle for uh, their civilization for their sovereignty, for their independency. Thank you very much once again for joining us today, sir. Thank you very, very much, sir. Thank you. You are watching UK Talk Show with Tahir Gora today. Tech TV UK Talk Show. London Dialogue and Discourse. Every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. UK time.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन